Okay, so let's get started. Um, so um, today we're gonna see the art movement after the, uh, the modern art we learned last week. So, um, so there are diverse art movements uh, between the, uh, the modern to the postmodern art. So the World War II you know, was uh, brought to a terrifying end on August 9, uh, 1945, uh, when the United States dropped an um, atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Nagasaki. So uh, the United States and the uh, Soviet Union had emerged from the war as the two dominant superpowers uh, were entering into the uh, prolonged nuclear armed standoff known as the Cold War. So we are going to see the art movement about that era. So, you know, when we learned the modern art um, last week, uh, the modern art um, had started uh, uh, from the foundation of the Rouvre Museum in Paris, right? But the, uh, the, the uh, art trend had um, have shifted to the United States. Um, um, so several developments had paved the way for the uh, flowering of the advanced art in America. So uh, one was the founding of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, you know, the MoMA in uh, 1929. So this is the timeline. Uh, the modern art movements uh, arose in Europe uh, since the foundation of the Rouvre Museum in Paris, right? However, after the foundation of the um, Museum of Modern Art in New York City, uh, the art trends moved from Europe to America. So uh, the painters associated with the uh, first major post-war art movement are commonly referred to as the uh, New York School uh, during the World War II. Uh, and there are diverse art movements um, uh, styles emerged in the uh, 60s and 70s in America. So um, let's see all of the uh, art movements, um, you know, the abstract expressionist, the pop art, uh, photorealism, minimalism, installation art, conceptual art, video art, and feminism. So the New York School was a, a convenient label under uh, which to lump together a group of painters also known as the abstract expressionists. Uh, the abstract expressionists were um, Jackson Pollock and uh, William de Kooning. Uh, they're the most uh, popular abstract expressionist artists. So this is the Jackson Pollock. We saw him um, before. So Paul Jackson Pollock was an American painter and a major in the abstract expressionist movement. Uh, he was widely noticed for his technique of pouring or splashing liquid household paint onto a horizontal surface, uh, in, enabling him to view and paint uh, his canvases from all angles. And that dripping technique is called action painting. Please remember this. So this is another action painting work. So uh, Paul, uh, Paul Jackson Pollock placed the unstretched canvas on the floor and painted on it indirectly uh, by casting paint from a brush in controlled gestures or by dripping paint from a stir stick. Uh, layer after layer, color after color, the painting grew into an um, all over tangle of graceful arches um, draped lines, spatters, and pools of colors. And the next ex uh, abstract expressionist artist um, is Willem de Kooning. Uh, Willem de Kooning was a Dutch American abstract expressionist artist. Um, the years after World War II, uh, de Kooning painted in a style that came to be referred to um, as abstract expressionism or action painting again. 
Um, and as part of a group of artists that came to be known as the New York School. So this is the Kooning's work. Um, the, uh, the Kooning's well-known women's series um, begun in 1950 and um, culminating in women six owes much to Pablo Picasso, not least in, a, in the um, aggressive, penetrative breaking apart of the figures uh, and the spaces around it. So the woman's painting is considered as a significant work of art for the museum through its historical context about the post-World War II um, and an uh, American feminist movement. Uh, he once believed the history of female representations as the idol, the Venus, and the nude. So now, uh, let's move on to the uh, 60s and 70s art. So this is composer John Cage, and he said like this, uh, music and art should be an affirmation of life, uh, not an attempt to bring order out of chaos, nor to suggest improvements in creation, but simply a way of waking up to the very life we are living. So. So that kind of concept was so popular to the artists um, in 60s and 70s uh, in the United States. So like Dada is um, of 40 years earlier now in the modern art we learned last week, young artists began mixing art back up with life as they found it uh, sometimes literally and often humorously. So critics, called the trend Neo Dada means new Dada. So uh, during the 60s and 70s, the directions that had been set out in the previous decade were continued, questioned, and uh, complicated by trends. So the first art movement in 60s and 70s we are going to see is the pop art. So pop for popular, the artist of um, pop found the gold mine of visual material in the mundane uh, mass produced objects and images of America's popular culture, such as comic books, advertising, billboards and packaging and um, ever expanding world of home appliances and other uh, commodities and photographic images from cinema, television, and newspapers. So like Dada, Neo Dada, pop drew art closer to life, uh, but life as it had already been transformed into images by advertising and the media. So we are going to see three, um, the most popular pop artists today, the first artist is Andy Warhol. Uh, so Andy Warhol uh, was born in Pittsburgh to working class immigrant parents. Uh, Warhol earned a degree in design at uh, Carnegie Institute of Technology in 1949. Uh, he was an American artist, director and producer who was a leading figure in the visual art movement known as pop art. So his goal was to become a commercial artist. And uh, within a year of arriving in New York City, he had top assignments from Glamour Magazine, Harper's Bazaar, Bogu, Martini and Rosie, um, Columbia Records, and many others. So his whimsical line drawings of cats, butterflies, and especially women's shoes uh, made him one of the most sought and highly paid illustrators in the city. So after working as an illustrator for only a few years, Warhol reinvented himself as a fine artist. So he based his uh, paintings on imagery he found in the American mass media, such as uh, uh, news photos, celebrity headshots, film stills, 
comics, logos, and um, advertisement. To convert his um, source images into paintings, Warhol made them into um, photo on uh, silk screen and printed them on canvas. Uh, smudges, misalignments, and um, inconsistencies were accepted giving the paintings a handmade appearance despite the use of a commercial process. So uh, there is a uh, Andy Warhol's silk screen work process video. Please watch it for your understanding after this meeting. So uh, sometimes the paintings include a single image um, as in Marilyn Monroe and the uh, Campbell's soup series. So he became larger than life, um, iconic portraits while those printed in Greece uh, suggest the way that repetition can uh, simultaneously embed an image in one's memory and um, deaden its effect. So these brash, innovative works are considered icons of pop art, um, a movement that both critiqued and celebrated post-war American consumer culture. By the end of the decade, uh, Warhol had become a celebrity in his own right, uh, um, equally famous um, for his platinum wig and the star-stopped parties he threw at his studio, the factory, um, as he was for his paintings, drawings, sculptures, and films. Um, in 1968, Warhol was shot and nearly killed by the actress uh, Bellari um, Solanis, and who had a big part in one of his films. So post the shootings, his work became both more commercial and more um, introspective. He hired himself out as a portraitist, making flattering images of the rich and famous but he also made the haunting self-portraits that hinted at his purposed, uh, purposed, um, a purported fear of death. Um, although he was only 58 years old when he died, he left an immense body of work that seems increasingly rele um, relevant today as the um, distinctions among art, entertainment, information, and uh, spectacle continue to erode. And the next pop artist is Roy Lichtenstein. Uh, Roy, Roy Lichtenstein was born on October 27, uh, 1923 in New York City. His father was a successful real estate broker and his mother was a homemaker and he had trained as a pianist and he exposed Roy and his sister Renee to museums, concerts and other aspects of New York culture. So Roy showed artist and uh, musical ability early on. He drew, painted and sculpted as a teenager and spent many hours in the American Museum of Nat uh, Natural History and the Museum of Modern Art. His work is inspired by cartoon, uh, which is one of the America's popular culture. And um, Liechtenstein used the stencils, uh, thick, black outlines and primary colors to uh, elevate both commercial images and the commercial printing process into art. He used the family year imagery to create art that uh, could be enjoyed by the masses after the series, a serious and uh, complicated abstract expressionist movement. So um, he said like this, pop art, looks out into the world. It doesn't look like a painting of something. It looks like the thing itself. It looked like a cartoon. Yes, he was inspired his work from the cartoon. It's a part of the life. The art is the part of the life. 
that's his um, concept of his work. So there is a video about Roy Lichtenstein's, uh, Roy Lichtenstein's uh, fun work process um, you know, in the modern room. So please watch it after this meeting. It's going to be really fun. And the last pop artist, Jeff Koons. Uh, Jeff Koons is an American artist recognized for his work dealing with popular culture and his sculptures depicting everyday objects, including balloon animals uh, produced in stainless steel with mirror finish surfaces. He lives and works in both New York City and his hometown of York, uh, Pennsylvania. So, um, and Jeff Koons, um, he is uh, one of the world's most expensive living artists and he is widely known for his balloon animal sculptures, um, began his bronze Hulk Elvis series uh, more than a decade ago. So this is one of his famous work, balloon dog sculpture. So uh, works from the ongoing series, Hulk Elvis, this is it, uh, range from uh, precision machined bronze sculptures and uh, it inspired by an um, inflatable of the popular comic book hero and uh, extruded in three dimensions. For Kunz, the character represents not only Western comic book culture, but Eastern uh, guardian gods as well. So he said like this, they are there as protectors. But at the same time, they can become very, very violent. So the hulks are like that. Um, they are really uh, high testosterone symbols. And Kunz designed Lady Gaga's art pop album cover and he exhibited artwork at uh, Gaga's art rave in the Brooklyn uh, Navy Yard. So there is one more video uh, about the pop artist, this Jeff Koons um, in the Moodle Room. So please watch that video um, for uh, fully understanding his amazing, um, the artwork. All right, so now um, let's see the other uh, art movement. Uh, between the modern uh, to the and the uh, postmodern. So you know we just saw abstract expressionist artists, right? Jackson Pollock and William de Kooning, right? And we just saw the pop three artists. Um, Andy Warhol, uh, Roy Lichtenstein, and Jeff Koons, right? And we're gonna see the rest of the art movement in the 60s and 70s in the United States. So the first art movement is uh, photorealism. So, um, so uh, the pop, Arts uh, focused on imagery in the mass media uh, inspired artists to look more closely at photographs. So in that trend called photorealism, and they began to paint what they saw in photograph. So the most popular artist of photorealism is Chuck Close. We saw his work uh, last week. So Chuck Close is an American painter an artist and photographers. He makes uh, massive scale photorealist portraits. Close often paints abstract portraits of himself and others uh, which hang in collections internationally. So Close also creates photo portraits using a very large format camera. So this is it. We saw this work last week, right? The super realistic portrait paintings, this is painting on a large canvases are uh, his uh, representative style of art. So Close 
had been known for his skillful uh, brushwork as a graduate student at Yale University. And Claude began a ser series of paintings derived from black and white photographs of a female nude, uh, which he copied onto canvas and painted in color. And he explained in a 29, uh, I'm sorry, 2009 uh, interview, he made a choice in 1967 to make art hard for uh, himself and force a personal artist breakthrough by abandoning the brush, uh, paintbrush. So throughout his career, Chuck Close has uh, expanded his contribution to portraiture um, through the uh, mastery of such varied drawing and painting techniques as ink, graphite, pastel, watercolor, conte crayon, finger painting, and stamp pad ink on paper, and also printmaking techniques such as measure tint, etching, woodcut, lino cuts, and um, um, silk screens, and as well as handmade paper collage, uh, Polaroid photographs, daguerreotypes, and um, Jacquard tapestries. And the next art movement in 60s and 70s is minimalism. So minimalism is an art movement that began in post-World War II Western art, most strongly with American visual arts in the 1960s and early 1970s. The movement is often interpreted as a reaction against abstract expressionism and modernism because they are so serious. And um, it anticipated uh, contemporary post-minimal art practices, which extend or reflect on uh, minimalism's original objectives. So Donald Jude is the most famous minimalist artist. So um, in his work, Jude sought autonomy and clarity for the constructed object and the space created by it. So this is his work. So it looks like a part of installation in a gallery and uh, he just used the geometrical shapes with the very simple color combinations. And the, uh, the next art style is installation. So installation art is an um, artistic genre of three-dimensional works that often are site-specific and designed to transform the perception of a uh, space. Uh, everyone, give me one second. I'll be right back. I, I, I forgot to turn off the uh, my stove. No problem, sure. I burnt my pot. <laughs> All right. So, um, so the minimalist we just saw, um, they, um, their um, sculptures were shown carefully positions like this, and and the uh, in the architectural spaces of a museum or galleries. The artist created in illustrate, um, I'm sorry, installations and spaces conceived of, a, of as works of art or viewers to enter and experience. Let's move on to the next um, art movement, uh, conceptual art. So um, conceptual art is art in which ideas are uh, paramount and the form that realizes those ideas is secondary 
uh, often lightweight or unremarkable. Conceptual art is art in which the concept uh, or ideas, again, involved in the work take um, precedence over traditional aesthetic, technical, and material concerns. So this is um, a conceptual artist work. Uh, conceptualism is not a style, but a way of thinking about art and the um, artists have put it to many different uses. Many conceptual artists worked with language for words uh, when written and taken a, uh, take on a uh, double life as image and idea. Uh, this is Yoko Ono's grapefruit uh, conceptual artwork. So this is uh, um, the artist book. An artist book is a work of art that is based on the idea of a book and what a book does. We accept that books are made of paper, uh, are bound and um, um, contain information. So the artist book plays uh, on these truth. Now let's move on to the next uh, important art movement in um, 60s and 70s, the video art. Uh, the portable video cameras were first made available to the general public in 1965. And the first two works of video art quickly followed within weeks of each other. And one was by Andy Warhol, uh, who had been asked by a magazine to experiment with one of the new devices. And the other one was by Nam Jun Pak, who recorded from a taxi his view of the uh, papal motorcade during the Pope's historic visit to New York in uh, 1965. So this is Nam Jun Pak. He's a very important uh, artist in the art history. Uh, Nam Jun Pak was a Korean American artist. He worked with the various of media and he is considered to be the founder of video art. This is his work. Uh, Nam Jun Pei internationally recognized as a father of video art, uh, created a large body of work including video sculptures, installations, performances, videotapes, and television productions. He had a global presence and influence and his innovative art and uh, visionary ideas continue to inspire a new generation of artists. So um, this is a part of his, um, one of the famous video art. So there is a video about his video art. Uh, please watch this after this meeting for understanding the video art. Now, uh, let's see the uh, feminist art. Um, so the feminist organizations had um, originally been uh, formed around such issues as equal rights and equal pay. Because images are so uh, powerful uh, and pervasive in contemporary society and visual uh, cultural um, quickly became a feminist concern uh, both in art and in the media. So women art professionals organized to recover women's art of the past to push for more equitable uh, representation in museums and in galleries and to nurture contemporary women artists. Uh, Judy Chicago is an American feminist artist art educator and writer known for her uh, large collective art installation pieces about birth and creation images, which examine the role of a woman uh, in history and culture. So by the 1970s, Chicago had founded the first feminist art program in the United States. So this is her work. Um, 
This Judy Chicago's dinner party is perhaps the most important work from this time. Uh, a collaborative work, the dinner party, was executed with the help of hundreds of women and several men uh, arranged around the triangle uh, table are um, 39 um, place settings, uh, each one created in honor of um, uh, influential um, women, um, such as the Egyptian ruler Hatshepsut and uh, the novelist Virginia Woolf. And the names of an additional uh, 999 important women are written on the center, uh, the tile floor. So that's it. I'm going to stop right here.